I can't even start to describe how I am excited to finally show you some new type of content. And today, as I promised earlier on my couple of community posts on YouTube, and definitely you saw something on Instagram, today is the day we start with some new content specifically for simulation racing. And this one is going to be quite interesting. Today we're going to talk about Moza Racing R5 bundle which comes with a wheelbase, wheel and two pedals, brake and throttle, but specifically we're going but specifically Moza R5 direct drive wheelbase, Moza ES steering wheel and SRP light pedals. Now taking into consideration that this is the second direct drive wheelbase that I actually had the pleasure to, of using and driving on it, uh, it will be quite interesting because you will have an opinion from a person that went from uh, standard wheels that are already connected to the base and doesn't have such force feedback, but yet you'll get some ideas what I'm talking about. So, so far I used all Logitech steering wheels, including the Logitech G Pro steering wheel and pedals. Now here, this is something completely different apart from the G Pro steering wheel. This R5 bundle is a perfect, and I'm, believe me when I say perfect upgrade from any of the Logitech non-direct drive steering wheels. And this will be quite interesting for you guys that want to switch to direct drive, but still don't want to spend too much money at first just to try it out. For instance, just to try it out, right? So this set without the SRP light clutch pedal costs $599. And the price tag on this one is just outstanding. So for instance, if you don't need a clutch pedal, you just need a steering wheel, you need a base, of course, logical, and you need brake and throttle pedals. This is it. And I'll tell you why. The construction on the R5 model is really solid. So let's start with the pedals. Uh, high strength steel, when we're talking about the construction, it's really outstanding how they design it in terms of no flex, really thick steel and I have to say it's really modular so you can adjust the pedals as you wish and move them sideways so you can move them on the main plate wherever you wish and you can adjust the height of the pedal as well. So this is quite cool. It has a high precision hole sensor and mapping pedal output curves, which we will get to that later on. And the base has an anti-slip design, even though if you have a seat that can accommodate uh, the pedals uh, where you could actually uh, tie them up with screws, you can do that without any problems. Now for the R5 direct drive wheelbase, we have 5.5 Newton meter torque. The design is made out of airplane grade aluminum. You have a possibility to actually adjust everything through Moza Pit house control software and you have an app cloud control as well. And finally to mention about the wheel, you have a handmade stitch letter. Uh, I'm not quite sure if it's an actual letter because it doesn't get that uh, smell as it should. Maybe it's some sort of a leatherette or something like that. But nevertheless, we have aluminum alloy frame which really does look quite nice. Customized quick release for real racing programmable flow shift light and 22 programmable buttons. Now let's talk about pedals. Specifically right here I have the clutch pedal and everything else is already assembled on my play seat uh, sim rig and I'll get to that part also later on. So you have a connection right here that you connect to the actual pedals that you get with the R5. So you have a special connection specially designed you just need to connect it, that's it. That's all the fuss, basically plug and play. Two millimeter thick steel here on the pedal, two screws going at the back and you can adjust it to the top or to the bottom, it depends how you desire. So you have a possibility to adjust it with three levels, which is quite cool and gives you some sort of a modularity and adjustment to your feet without a doubt. Now the clutch pedal also has at the bottom rubber feet so if you're not using a sim rig or a chair that uh, is designed for that and you don't have a possibility to mount them or fixate them this will do the trick but I would also suggest placing something behind to distance it from the wall for instance just because when you're pushing it you really can squeeze the rubber a bit. I would put a shorter box or something which is lower so you don't hit the box at the back. Just to distance yourself from the wall and I think that would be quite alright. Now here's the thing. 
you can easily attach the clutch pedal to the rest of the pedals and that's basically it. The only thing that you need to do is reposition the brake pedal to the middle and that's all there is to it. Now what I've noticed is while placing the SRP brake and throttle to my playseat, I actually have a playseat F1 Ultimate Edition and while placing the whole plate and everything on the on the plate of the play seat, uh, the throttle and the brake are were a bit too wide. So this is good because you can adjust the spacing and it doesn't collide with the play seat. Even though if your feet are a bit too wider, you would definitely hit the F1 play seat. But if you're rocking something much more cheaper and affordable in terms of the sim rig. Uh, you won't have those issues. But also, cool thing that you can adjust the spacing on any other steering wheel that I mentioned so far, you can't do those things. They're fixated and that's that. Uh, the clutch pedal, basically what it does is it it's just like a button, I would say. You just press it just to switch gears, that's all that it does. It doesn't have that much force, but then again, I'm pressing with my hand currently. I tested it uh, with my feet as well and it just has that quick press just to change gears. That's all there is to it. Now when we're talking about throttle and brake, brake doesn't have some sort of a adjustment when it comes to pressure and force, while the throttle is much, much easier when we're talking about the spring right here. So there is an actual difference in force with the spring, which is quite good actually. And it gives you more feel to driving and pressing the throttle pedal and the brake pedal. And there are some cool kicks that you could do in their software as well. So we'll get to that part later on. Now the base, 5.5 newton meters of torque compared to the G Pro steering wheel that has 11 newton meters of torque. Now also there's a possibility to adjust the torque. So you don't have to use the complete 5.5 newton meters. You can adjust them as you wish in their software, which as I said, we'll get to that part later on. But the cool thing is 5.5 after using G923 or G29 or any of those steering wheels is without a doubt a first in line that I would suggest going with direct drive. 11 might be a bit too strong for you if you're going with 100% of torque in the direct drive and it will definitely make some sort of a, well, it will be something like You'll have to go to the gym to actually be able to control the wheel 16 and others even higher it, i don't even have to mention that but 5.5 for you guys that want to switch from g29 g923 is going to be quite nice in terms of accessing direct drive with such torque the base is quite small i would say and the cool thing you get a clamp which is designed to be placed on a table and it's quite easy to assemble it you have four screws that go through the clamp directly to the wheelbase and those two clamps are quite nice and easy to adjust to the table you have eight centimeters of space from the clamps to the bottom part of the base and you have a certain angle of it so unfortunately it's not adjustable but if you have a sim rig that has a possibility to adjust the angle of the base and the steering wheel you're good to go but here's the thing i placed the base with the clamps uh, on the playseat f1 ultimate edition as already stated but uh, i wanted first just to mount the base and unfortunately playseat didn't create exact holes for this base it might be the reason because it's a quite uh, compact size i would say so that might be the reason that placey didn't actually do the holes exactly as the r5 wheelbase is designed but that's why you get those clamps you can place them on your table you can place them on any sort of a sim rig which will give you some sort of a I don't know, uh, easy of adjustment and stuff like that. Also, the thickness of the steel of the clamp beneath the base is two millimeters, but everything else that touches the table or sim rig, it doesn't matter, is five millimeters. And the cool thing, it doesn't destroy your table while pressing it because it has some sort of a nice material inside, so it kind of uh, doesn't have a direct touch to your table. The clamps are really strong, so you'll get quite nice fixture and uh, you won't have any flex while moving the steering wheel. Now talking about the steering wheel, the size is actually the same as G29 and G923, which is 
quite familiar for you guys that already own those and want to switch so you won't have any problems adjusting to your new steering wheel and that's cool. So you have 22 programmable buttons and you have a programmable flow shift light which will definitely be very useful while driving if you're more concentrated on the track and you have you know just a part of your eye. Checking out the flow shift light which has 10 LEDs and they're also programmable so you can adjust that as you wish. In the middle you have a white track to adjust the center of the wheel and uh, the pedal shifts. They're actually quite nice I would say. They do have some sort of a uh, free space of movement when you press them but if you're used to doing that quickly you won't even notice because you won't be pressing them to the full extent. You're just reaching out to make a click to upshift or downshift and that's basically it. You won't be pressing it and pulling it maximum to the steering wheel. You're just clicking it and doing everything that you need to do a fast shift up or shift down. That's it. The feel of the steering wheel is quite nice and basically when you're driving you don't have any flex with the connection to the steering wheel. It's quite nicely designed and what I've heard is that they use the same customized quick release as on the FSR for Formula which is outstanding steering wheel I have to say but unfortunately I didn't have that one. This is just what I learned from the web. So imagine this having a quick release on a steering wheel with everything coming in a bundle that is 599 and just the FSR is 699. So this is something that you'll be quite shocked but still you're getting a quite nice deal with everything. So let's check out what we have everything uh, over there packed and uh, do some driving so you can see how the actual wheel and the torque and everything works all together. So in the Moza pit house uh, there's a possibility to adjust literally everything from the maximum steering angle you can choose from F1, GT, hypercar and sports car so that's really cool and you can actually adjust more than that. The engine RPM indicator switch mode which can be off RPM indicator or on. Uh, then when we go to the R5 base where you can uh, adjust the intensity of the torque you have a maximum steering angle possibility to adjust here as well. Road sensitivity, uh, present modes like drift, Formula 1, GT, karting, performance rally, game force feedback, intensity, maximum wheel speed, wheel spring strength and wheel dampener. Then we have advanced settings for much more force feedback reversal with six additional settings. FFB effect equalizer where you can adjust the operating wheel body bumps and stuff like that then we have soft limit sti stiffness after that we have the srp light pedals to adjust you can set the maximum strength for pressing uh, for the throttle brake and clutch and in more you can adjust the curves for the clutch brake and throttle which will give you Definitely some interesting insights, well not insights, but definitely interesting output curves while pressing and driving which will definitely help you in those terms. After that you have possibility to adjust uh, their screens that are placed on the bases. Uh, we have the uh, firmware upgrade, system settings, recovery and reset, uh, dark mode for instance, experimental functions and well basically that's it. But 
when you take a look at it, it really gives you loads of options and you have a game launcher on the right side to actually launch directly games from the Moza Pit house without any hustle going directly to Steam Origin or any other game launchers. The conclusion is very easy. If you're deciding to move to Direct Drive and you don't want to spend too much money since you already have some sort of a past, let's say, steering wheel, uh, I would definitely recommend this one. I know I don't have too much experience when it comes to direct drive steering wheels, base and pedals, but what I can say is moving from G29, G923 and even testing out G Pro steering wheel, which costs around, uh, if I'm correct, $1,300. And going back to this one, which is $600, and you can change the wheels, you can, I don't know, buy an FSR if you're into that. Or you can check out other steering wheels, add an SRP light clutch pedal or some other performance kits that will give more meaning to your pedals, that will give... It's all up to you to decide with other accessories, of course. But if you're moving from any of those steering wheels that I mentioned to a direct drive, this is actually quite affordable in terms of getting an almost real deal in terms of torque, solid quality when we're talking about material, and after all, a really nice software that will back up everything that you're trying to achieve with sim racing. Uh, unfortunately, with my PlayStation sim rig, this isn't uh, not compatible entirely, but the clamps holding the base will most likely, for some of you, get in the way. I'm a bit skinnier, so I don't have those problems pushing the legs directly next to them and pressing the throttle and the brake pedals without any issues. But that's only me and that's all I have to say. All in all, I'm really fascinated, I do have to say. I did drive the G Pro steering wheel and I was really impressed as well. There was 11 Nm meters of torque, this is 5.5. But honestly, checking out everything that I had and tested out so far when we we're talking about steering wheels, if I was buying myself a new direct drive steering wheel and if I was looking something on a budget, there are no questions asked, I would definitely go with this because first of all, as I already stated, a compact base, quite nice steering wheel, familiar dimensions and quite enough buttons for everything that you want to drive and the pedals, if you decide to use clutch, you can buy an additional one and pedals are really nice and solid. So guys, I don't know what to say anymore. I uh, know this is a first video in this line of sim racing and hopefully there will be coming quite a lot quite shortly and I will definitely mention the Moza Racing R5 bundle in the PlayStation F1 Ultimate Edition when I do the review on that one. If you wish to check out more details of course on the Moza Racing R5 bundle with steering wheel, base and pedals and of course I'll place additional link for the SRP light clutch pedal you can check them out in the description below so if you're new to the channel you like the content and you don't want to miss that review don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell just so you don't miss that video so thanks for watching today's one and hopefully I will see you very soon bye bye